about the time I got round to doing these double cabbages that were grown in this little container. We only want quite small seedlings and then we can prick them out and move them on. And these are definitely at that point because they've got the true leaves on them as well now. And I don't need a lot and the idea is to grow them on over the next couple of months and then we're going to overwinter them. So then we can be harvesting Savoy cabbages in early spring. But at least that's the plan, weather allowing. Because apparently there's thunderstorms about this afternoon at some point. But they're not going to do anything as long as I leave them in these little packs. And then we can sow a few more bits and bobs as well and start thinking about what we need to be sowing and growing now for planting out in a few weeks time to harvest next spring. I'm just going to put these seedlings into one of these trays. They're quite big cells so we can encourage things to grow a little bit quicker and get a better more established root system before we put them out in the garden. Now, I'm not planting many. Last year we did red cabbages as an overwinter cabbage and if you've been following the channel over the last few months you'll know we got quite a lot of really good sized cabbages out of that. I'm just filling these packs up and then I'm just lightly compacting it down. Brassicas don't like growing in loose compost anyway. So we'll just squash it down a little bit, top it back off and that's that set up. Now we can get these seedlings pricked out and popped into these cells. I'll just get that compost a bit of a watering first. So when we make those holes, they'll stay where we put them and then just not crumble back in while we're trying to get these seedlings in. So first job. Nice deep holes. If you've seen me do this before, you'll know that we plant things right down to the first leaves that came out. And by doing that, we create much stronger, stabler plants. So we'll just carefully start digging these plants out. We'll try and get the biggest ones out of these. It's just a case of teasing them out without trying to break the roots. So we get a clump like that, but we're not bothered about these little ones. It's that big one that we're interested in. So if we free that off, shake away some of that compost, you can see we've got a really good plant and it's got its first true leaf on it. So that's ideal. And we're going to push that in right down to there. You can see how much of that stem I've just buried. And then when we firm it in, We've got a nice upright plant, unlike the ones that's growing in here, which are now starting to fall over because they're getting too long. Let's get another one. They come out really easily. And again, a very good example. So just pop it down, push it in like that. And we're done very quick and easy job and we're getting really nice looking little plants out of this take that label out it might help so just digging in carefully trying to free this off if they come out in a clump it doesn't matter you can just work it like that that is not a bad sized plant and that's got a true leaf so we'll try and save both of these shake that compost off get it in nice and deep firm around and that's another one done let's have a look at this one it's not a bad looking plant that so we'll have that one. I think we've got a couple of biggish ones over here. I 
That'll do. As I said, I'm only planting a few, so. We've got six there, and we've still got quite a few left in here. I can just leave them to grow on as they are, or I could prick out a couple more in case I lose any of these. But for now, we've got six set up. Pop that label in there, and then we know what they are. So another quick easy job, and we've got to sell six Savoy cabbages all on the way. I probably will prick a couple more of those out and move them on into another container later. As I've always said, it doesn't hurt to have backup plants all the way through here. And I think somebody was on about my tomatoes having blossom end rot. And you're quite right, somebody's got a good eye on them. That one definitely got blossom end rot. So, We'll have to get as cow my gut and give these plants a feed because it fixed the ones in the other greenhouse. And we have got quite a lot of fruit on this plant that's just starting to ripen. And we don't like losing anything, especially Italian plum tomatoes. But yeah, thanks for spotting that. I'm actually stood right next to it every day, didn't even see it. So it's really good that we work together as a team. And because now we've seen that, we need to check every other tomato on this plant just in case there's any more and get rid of them as soon as we can. But that's a bridge that we crossed earlier on in here and we did realise that although it looks quite devastating, we managed to get past that with that little tip from D. And it is a fact that San Maranzo, especially, are prone to blossom end rot. For its acre about six pounds, it was well worth buying that Shogun Calmag because we've still got quite a lot left in that bottle and that's going to be there for us next year. So we're already prepared for that little problem come next year, if it does arise. If we grow some more Italian plums, we'll see. For now, we're sorting out as spring sowings and as plantings. So that's them sorted, that's them on way. We'll keep these in greenhouse because every single time I put them outside, I end up with butterflies landing on little seedlings like this and trying to lay eggs on them. And butterflies aren't going away anytime soon. Apart from that, if a pigeon sees little brassica seedlings, they're going to devastate them in no time. So to avoid losing any plants at this stage of year, they can stay in here. We'll just keep them on that raised bench so there's less chance of damage by slugs that way. And then what I'm going to be doing is probably sowing some more sets of spring onions. But rather than putting them in a container to all grow together, I'll sow so many seeds into little cells so we can just take out a plug of spring onions and pop them in the garden of those cabbages. And then we'll think about what else we want to grow. I'm not growing a lot over winter. I never do. So I'll be keeping things going in containers in this greenhouse and in that container garden. But I don't tend to plant a lot of things outside in the ground. So as we go over the next few days, we'll decide exactly what we're doing. And I do need to check that big oop tunnel that we've got. Because we have got quite a lot of plants in there. And it's constantly covered with a net. Because there's cabbages and cauliflowers in there. So it's susceptible to damage from caterpillars. If those butterflies get on them. Which they will. But we need to take all that netting off. Because there's lots of plants in there that for me... Might as well be got rid of now. We've got lots of those cherry fall tomato plants in there and they're all getting tired and they have still got fruit on them that's ripening, which is brilliant. So I think what we'll do is we'll take the last of those tomatoes off and we'll pull those plants. I've got some dwarf broad beans in there and as far as I can remember, I don't think I've had any broad beans off them this year. So they might as well come out as well, along with some pepper plants that haven't got any fruit on them. So it's a big clean up as we approach autumn. Get rid of any plants that aren't really going to give us anything back except space if we pull them out. So that's the plan. And then everything can have a little bit more growing space. We can give it a quick weed and then get that net back over as soon as possible before any of those butterflies land. But that's a job for weekend. So if you're interested in seeing how we get on with that, please hit that subscribe button. Press that notifications bell and I'll see you then. You all take care. Enjoy your weekend.